Welcome back in. We appreciate you spending time with us this evening. If you're as passionate about college football and high school football as the people are in this room, you're going to enjoy the show. And we've got uh, a, a, just a stellar list of guests, not only uh, panel pers- uh, participants, including Doug Conkle, Chris Mooneyham, Rusty Mansell. My name is Doug Cowart, and this is the Fan 680 93.7 FM. You'll hear from uh, Milton Head Coach. Milton High School, Adam Clack. You'll get Jeff Collins, the head coach from Georgia Tech, as well as GHSA Executive Director Robin Hines. That's all in the first hour. Fellas, what's going on with you? A lot. No kidding. <laughs> there's, there's a lot going on. We're going to get to a little news brief of sorts here coming up in just a moment, guys. Seems like every day or at least we're not going two days without hearing some big news in the state of Georgia. Big, little, doesn't matter. Something is yeah. always happening right now. You get a reschedule. You get a team that can't practice. I mean, it's minute by minute. I'm I'm the opposite. I'm I'm that there's 390-something teams yeah. ready to buckle up next week. There you go. We're going to have hiccups, and yeah. that's just, that's just going to be. We talked about that. I think, um, you know, we're going to have Dr. Hines on again. I was on a conference call with him yesterday, and what he has done and the decisions he has made and yeah. what he has went through this summer, I, I, he made it today, you know, you don't want to be me right now and 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 he what he has had to do uh has been incredible to be honest with you and and we hope everything goes safe i know he does too there's week-to-week meetings but i all the coaches and like what he said he's gonna say it again tonight i'm sure 99 percent of the responses he got has been let's play i love that you know what i mean and it's i think if it was 85 15 we wouldn't be sitting here today but he knows the pulse of these state of georgia coaches these communities and everybody wants to play as long as we can. I'll tell you what, it's funny that you bring that up because I was talking to somebody during the week about this. It's almost like Robin Hines is like a wartime president and we're winning the war. <laughs> every, well, day, every, day. Well, every, you know day, because, every day. Every day. Yeah, and here's the thing. It, it, yeah. at every GHSA director gets criticized. All these guys get criticized. Yeah, yeah. Swearingen, one of the greatest of all time, who, who left us a few years ago, not left us, but I mean, he yeah. retired. Yeah, right, right. Uh, he was criticized. Gary Phillips was re- uh, uh, criticized. And Robin Hines has been as well. But he's kind of like a wartime president in that he's performed so well in the middle of this crisis. There are a lot of people that, have, that are saying, you know what? I've gained so much respect for him, and I yeah. care so much more about him now than I, than I ever have before. It, it's, I can imagine his phone every day. Yeah. I, I bet his phone is like me on National Signing Day. Just every day right now. You know what I mean? Like, I can't imagine how, how many times a day he has to charge yeah. it. But, yeah. you know, I, I certainly wanted high school football. It's not my decision if it's safe enough. But they have weekly meetings, mm. and they have been consistent. If you follow what we've got in place, we're going to be able to play football. And, man, we're, we're one week from it. Uh, back to your analogy, Chris. He's like a wartime president. But he's like a wartime president who's done everything right. And now we're about to fight the big battle. That's right. We're about to That's fight. right. So, so yep. this is where this is where he is, succeeds or he doesn't doesn't succeed. And I think he's done a tremendous job. But like like Russ is saying, we all hope it goes well. If it doesn't, he's the guy whose butt is truly the on the line. It is. It that's is. why you get. That's why you're a leader, though. It is. You, you got to make the tough decision. You got to hope things turn out, and and that if everyone does what they're supposed to, it should. But so, I th- so I think- we've won some skirmishes in Africa, and now we're yeah. getting ready to yeah. land yeah. on D Day. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is like World War II for sure. But you know, it it it, it does seem that way because. You're right, man. There's no pleasing everyone, right. and and I don't I don't think he should try to please everyone. I think he should do what he thinks is best, and I, I believe that's what he's done. And and I look forward to talking to him here in about five or six minutes or so. Uh, you're listening to the 680 The Fan High School Athletic Roundtable. We of course we'll talk a lot of college football, but Mooney, as we discussed earlier, there's more to high school athletics than just football. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, 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 it's it's important to remember these kids that are not getting to play. We've got 70 uh, teams that uh, will not be playing uh, the week of September 4th next week when these games begin. Right around 70 teams is the rough number because we've got yep. teams coming in, yep. coming in and, 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 coming and going back. out. There's about 425 or so teams in the state of Georgia, so I'll do the math for you. Don't worry. Uh, uh, that's about 16% or so. You saw how scared Rusty looked? Just yeah, I did. Right, right. <laughs> he, he pulled out his abacus there. Uh, usually I let my wife do the math in the house. She was right, went right over this. Uh, do, do, let me give you some updates here because we have had a lot of news break over the last week especially the last two weeks since we were last on the air. I'm not going to go back that far, of course. Uh, uh, Newton County Schools, this is important, lifted their ban. Big deal. Uh, so you're going to find Alcove, east side of Covington, and the Newton Rams that are gonna, uh, going to get to play their season. That's big for Newton, as you know. Huge. That's a great team. We've got them at number 13 in our 680 The Fan Friday Night Football uh, rankings, our preseason rankings, which, by the way, you can find at 680thefan.com backslash Friday Night Football. Um, Pay that man. Sp- Pay that man. Speaking <laughs> of rankings, uh, Milton is number 10 in our Friday Night Football 7A rankings. They're out until September 3rd. Positive tests. 
due to COVID, uh, but they'll have plenty of time to get ready for their opener September 17th against Johns Creek. Cambridge, is Cambridge four or five miles down the road? From Milton? From, yeah, Something not, like not that, even right? that far. Yeah, 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 really not even that far. Right. Well, they, they, too, are in uh, quarantine. September 25th will be their first ball game against Forsyth Central. They'll have plenty of time to get ready. They'll be back on the uh, field August 29th. Uh, Macon Bibb County Schools, another big one, uh, is going to now enter a phase-in schedule to bring their kids back out now onto that, the that, field. Now, that's a change. They were they were not going to play, correct? Is it, this, a, this a change? I yes, this, yes, yeah, sorry. That's yeah, yeah. a big deal. Absolutely, that's a it's big a big deal. deal. Yeah, for those kids. Not only did they decide they're coming back, but they've they've earmarked September 14th. That's great. So they're going to hit the field uh, really quick here. Let's head out uh, to Middle Georgia and South Georgia and East Georgia. Baldwin is down in uh, Baldwin High School. The Braves are down in Middle uh, Georgia. Uh, Milledgeville. Yes. In Milledgeville. They've decided, uh, announced on Tuesday, they're going to play only a region schedule. Yep. That affects a lot of schools. Hancock Central in Sparta, which is in East Georgia, just off of 20, and Dooley County in Middle Georgia, south of Macon, right off of 75 there. Both Class A public schools delaying their seasons. Um through September 25th is is the date. Now, one more one more uh, in South Georgia, Terrell County, uh, down near Albany. That's been a hot spot. Doherty hot County, spot. of course, yeah, they've sure. delayed their season until October, canceling all of their um, their region ball games, non-region ball games. So I mean, the only thing that I that I struggle with is moving it back two weeks. I don't know what the benefit is there. That's do you, do we you talked about know? that. We talked about that here here. Like Alabama started mm -hmm. last week, right? Two weeks ahead of us. If there is. A cluster of hiccups. Mm. Albany, learn from it. Albany, Savannah. We have you know eight or 10, 12, 15 teams in the season need two weeks off. What does that do to everybody else? Because we basically have taken away our safety padding. Path. You know, at the end, you yeah. know, we're state championship after Christmas now. We're after Christmas for state championships in Georgia. So I'm not griping at all. I just, no, of course, not. I just I like it. to say why we. We, I wish we could have started on time and had those two weeks because there's going to be some hiccups. I'm a, I'm a girl dad, girl dad, four girls. Yeah. I know all the softball teams. I know a softball team in Northwest Georgia is about six games in. They got hit this week. So now they're going to miss about seven region games mm. in the next two weeks. So how do they get those games back? Do they have the padding in the schedule or gonna, no? No. So no. basically, like we're talking about, you, you, they're you lost have to play, that battle. They're, they're going to have to play double hitters at some point. Yeah. They're going to play some Saturday games to mm -hmm. make up. You know, mm -hmm. So it's different when you play in a football game because you take a beating and you have to play five days later. So I believe the reason why they keep pushing it ahead, the theory, I'm not saying it's the right way to go, is because they're thinking, well, let's, let's get these kids in school. Let's let the COVID do what it's going to do. Let's find it. Let's get at it. Let's get beyond it. And then we can play. So the hope is they'll weather that initial storm and be in better shape for the rest of the season. Makes sense. I believe with you, what you guys say, though, I, I've always thought that. Start earlier and give yourself a chance right. to adjust as, as it goes on. But I want to repeat something we said two, uh, two weeks ago. We're going to say it again tonight, I'm sure, a couple times. Be happy if you get to play yeah. a football game. And, they are, and everybody no, is. I think everybody, everybody is. is. Everybody yeah. is. I appreciate it. Uh, let me give you guys one more update. Uh, Westminster, uh, the Westminster schools have had to push back the start of their season due to COVID-19 contact school quarantine rules. They still have not practiced in pads, by the way. Westminster will not make up its September 4th opener against Lovett. And uh, th that was our, our opener. Doug Conkle. It was going to be the opening Friday night football game of the week. We're going to do a cold quit at Marietta now, though. So Ooh, the big one. That'll big be one. a nice little uh, cross-state rivalry. The the post props Colquitt County players coming up here to take on Marietta post Harrison Bailey. Here we go. All right. Well, 680, the uh, fan in the high school athletic roundtable brought to you by Georgia Farm Bureau and my MRI guy bringing Robin Hines onto the show. He is the GHSA exec executive director. Good to talk to you, sir. We appreciate your time again. Thank you for being on with us. How are you? Where? Are you are you there? I'm here. All right. Good news. <laughs> uh, Executive Director Robin Hines, thank you so much. Doing okay? Are you as excited about the uh, the high school football uh, season as, as everybody in this room, sir? Uh, more. more. <laughs> I like uh, it. If we, if we kick it off, when, when it gets kicked off, then that'll be like, <laughs> that's a major goal achieved. Mm -hmm. You know, no doubt. So, yeah, I'm real excited. Dr. Hines, Rusty Mansell here. We were on a conference call yesterday, uh, mentioned this. I was in Alabama last weekend, was able to watch a team basically from the time they got in the parking lot, shot temperatures before they ever went to the gym. This team had to bus about an hour, got to the game, mask, all that. How much did you pay attention to what was going on in that state last weekend, and, and what did you guys learn, if anything, from the state of Alabama on opening weekend? Where I think they had close to 150 games in Georgia, I mean, Alabama and Tennessee last weekend. 
They they did, and they had some successes, and, and they had some places where they probably could have done a better job, you know, just like we're going to have. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I've spoken with Steve Savarese, who is the executive director in Alabama, you know, I, probably every day this week, you know, just to see how things went and, and what they did. And, and every state is different. You know, they do things a little bit different over there. They're uh, – governor and state uh, departments of health uh, you know have more oversight control whereas ours are more local control you know is the way those things work and so you know you got a bunch of different different ways of doing things instead of a blanket you know you're going to have this many percent and I like the way we're doing it because Mm -hmm. we've got some places that have not been impacted at all and they shouldn't be impacted and there are other places that uh, you know have different scenarios and and their percentages of spectators may be different you know and locals being able to mandate masks and those sorts of things so so they're really different but i think alabama did a really good job and i know that steve savarese and his folks have been on top of it and and i know we have and i'm just ready to i'm ready to get it going dr hines uh, chris mooney i'm here thanks for joining us um, did you all at the GHSA did, did did you did you speak to the the regions uh, uh, the the counties uh, in regards give your thoughts on these attendance numbers as we've seen so many of these reports coming down over the last couple of weeks like Gwinnett has decided to limit their fan attendance uh, to thirty percent for the fall uh, Glenn County for instance has decided on forty percent uh, for the fall did 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 you guys throw in your input there or or did they come to you and and ask for your opinion on it. Well, a lot of people, everybody asks their, your opinion on it. They ask your opinion on everything because it's it's a whole lot easier for somebody else to make a decision than you to make a decision. But uh, but but the way that it works is, is uh, you know, we win and we give the guidance that the Department of Health gives. Like in, in Georgia, the State Department of Health, they give a lot of guidance out. But the individual departments of health, you know, what they do is they have autonomy. And so so they make their own minds up about the way those things go. So when we talk about those deals, you know, we feel like that the local superintendent, the local boards of education, the local departments of health are in much better shape to determine what's best for their community than what we are. It may be a place I've never been to. I've never seen. I've never seen their, their setup. So uh, that's kind of the way that we're approaching it. You know, we've got places that have said that we're going to allow 35% capacity indoors, you know. So for us right now, that would be volleyball. You know, we're going to go 45% outdoors, you know, for football and those sorts of things. We've got others that feel like that they're going to open it up and uh, let things go. They're going to require masks. We've got some that are not going to. You know, my first focus is the Corky Kale uh, Classic, which, you know, the masks are going to be required, you know, the uh, – the seating spectators are limited there, and we're going to see how things go. You know, I saw some some troubling uh, things out of Alabama, you know, last week, but you know, not of anybody's fault. You know, it's just that, you know, when people come in there, you can't have just people loaded up saying, you got to social distance and move them apart. You know, there's got to be some social responsibility as well. Uh, Dr. Hines, this is Doug Conkle uh, talking. I, I got a question for you. Are you familiar with the Utah team, the American Forks Cavemen? Uh, is that the one where the AD went on and said, we're not going to play until you social distance? That's exactly right. I knew you would know the answer to that. So I, I yeah. want to, if anyone's not familiar, the athletic director literally stopped the game in the first quarter, told everybody in the stands, we told you what to do. You're not doing it. And unless you put your masks on and social distance, we're not going to keep playing this football game. Now, he was pretty extreme, but is that the kind of leadership you would like to see, I think, on the local level for people that have established these rules, for people they can see not following them, like you mentioned in Alabama? There were some some disappointing uh, actions by some fans there. Well, I'm sure there were some disappointing actions in Utah as well. Sure. And I talked to Rob Cuff, who's the executive director from Utah today as well. And, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, that's going to happen. I mean, it's, I mean people are going to uh, uh, do those things. And I don't want to say anything derogatory about those situations because those people have 
all of them have planned and done a great job of getting ready for this. You know, okay? So, but if you can imagine 5,000 people in the stands and all that stuff, are you going to send a volunteer or a math teacher right. or something up into the stands to say, sir, you got to put your mask on or you're out of here? You know, that's not going to happen. You know, I mean, let, we've got to be realistic about those things. And what we've got to have is social responsibility. And, and you know, when we reach that, we're going to be better on all levels. Now, I, I will say that uh, I don't know if you guys have been following the numbers, but I have been very encouraged with the numbers that I've seen leading up to the season. You know, and I'm breathing a sigh of relief, uh, you know, of, of where that's concerned. So I'm feeling pretty good going in there, but I'll feel a whole lot better when we kick it off and I'll be watching some football. Excuse my dog. He's, <laughs> he's fine. He's always welcome. <laughs> His name is Elvis. He's a great guy. <laughs> he is in the building. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yes, he is. Dr. Hines, Dr. Hines, well, this is Rusty again. Will you guys continue to have a meeting every single week with your medical uh, team and those types of things? I know you've been doing that pretty much all the summer. Is that, is that the plan as the season moves forward? Well, we're going to do it in less than a week this time because, uh, you know, a week would be on Wednesday. And on Wednesday, I'm going to uh, be heading up to the Corky Kale Classic mm -hmm. on Wednesday. Uh, so we're going to meet on Tuesday, just kind of see where we are. But believe it or not, we're not necessarily talking about, you know, high school football or anything like that. We'll be talking about some other issues about how we will handle, uh, you know, situations that, that could arise as a result of the COVID-19, you know, and just to be prepared, um, you know about those uh, you know things and mm -hmm. how we reacclimatize. We put some things out there today that, that we hopefully will be able to help some schools that that can uh, you know that maybe have some kids quarantined that could help them you know loosen some things up safely to allow them to get some kids back quicker and give them some options anyway. So those are the things we're talking about now. Dr. Hines, I got to ask you kind of a hybrid question uh, uh, similar to what I asked you last week, and you'll know as soon as I start to bring it up. Southeast Bullock, um, down by Statesboro, is in a region where the rest of their region teams are now out. Uh, save Liberty County, who has uh, uh, Liberty County has uh, indefinitely suspended their season. But all the Savannah schools that were in that region have now, uh, of course, as we all know, announced they're going to play an intra district schedule. I asked you last, uh, not last week, two weeks ago, about how we would form the playoff brackets. And most of us who are listening, who are experts, know that uh, it, it, the regions will decide who makes the playoffs. But what if there's only one team in said region? Have you guys had conversations about maybe bringing back that, uh, that power ranking structure to try to let in a fifth place team from another region? Or, or how do you think we'll end up handling that? Trying to figure out who takes those three spots to get into the state tournament. Let me think about power rankings for a minute. No. <laughs> no. Uh, That's why I said it like that. I already knew what your, I already knew what your answer was going to be. But, but in all seriousness, how do you think we'll handle that? And I'll be serious. Uh, you know, first thing is, I think Liberty County is going to be back. Ah. You know, I think they're going to be able to come in there. I think they're going to be able to play. I, uh, uh, now, as far as Savannah Chatham, you know, playing in intra thing i'll tell you how that worked they came and said we're, we're not going to play uh outside of the county we're playing an intra and so our response was well does that mean that you're not going to be in the playoffs oh no no that's not what we said but that's what you wrote so we had to go back and do that again and 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 the agreement from that region and i could be wrong because i wasn't in the meeting and you know, there are 430 schools, you know, playing football and that sort of thing. But I believe what's happening is that uh, the Southeast Bullock and Liberty County would be the one and two is the way that they've determined that. And Correct. Savannah Chatham will, will take the three and four, you know, depending on what comes out of their region, which I think is really good because, you know, as we know, regions determine that. And you've got a 17 region, you got five Savannah regions. And, you know, they made the decision they did. It, 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 it puts some hardship on the teams not in their region. And, you know, I think that that's a way that they could make it right. And, uh, you know, so, so you know, I feel pretty good about that situation. Now, to take that further, if you get into a situation, to, because, because we have basically eight classifications nowadays, 
which in you know everybody that knows that follows reclassifications knows that I think that's entirely too many. We've got too many small regions and that sort of thing. So you, there is a possibility, guys, that that you could see some buys uh, in the brackets in the playoffs, and you know that's the the monster that we've created. And uh, and of course, you know, to throw that in with the situation that we're in now, that that absolutely could happen. So. Um, you know, the regions still determine how they do it. They can do it from playing. They can do it from they have the rights to get in the corner and draw them out of a hat, you know. so, But uh, but that's how we're going to do things. Dr. Hines, we appreciate your time, and we appreciate everything you've done for Georgia high school football. I know that, that everything you're working on has uh, people that love it, and then there's going to be the, those critics, and you can't please everyone. But we just uh, want to say how much we appreciate the work you've done for the well, uh, for the high school that. students. I appreciate it. You know, our focus is, is is providing kids a framework where they can have some opportunities to be successful. But I did want to say one thing. I think on the lead-in, when I was coming in, you were talking about Cockwood and Marietta. It's my understanding, I believe, that Cockwood County has had some offensive and defensive linemen that are quarantined, and they feel that they're not going to be able to play. So I, I don't think they're going to play the first two weeks. You know, that's something that we need to follow up on and, and, and see where that's going. So, you know, I know they had Marietta and Brookwood the first two weeks. Yep. So, Every radio show likes to break news. I do not like this news you are breaking right now. Uh, that was that was, that was my great having you, Friday. Dr. Hines. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> well, uh, go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Throw a nugget out there for you. Yeah. And, uh, Oh boy! You know, and, and it's, it's really, it's, it, you know, it's, it's certainly disappointing. But we, you know, I've said from day one, there's going to be some bumps in the definitely, road, and definitely. this is certainly a bump in the road. And you know, those kids, you know, our focus now is to support Cockle County and make sure that they're squared away and get those kids reacclimatized and, and ready to go for week three. Dr. Robin Hines, the executive director of the GHSA. Thank you, sir, for your time. We appreciate you being on the fan with us. Have a great day. You too, sir. Thank you, sir. What a guy, man. A guy that uh, is clearly passionate, but uh, we can't, we can't, I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about uh, what Mooney is banging his head against the microphone for. I I don't know what you're upset about. I was going to call the game. I just got a text from a coach that said, Colquitt is shut down. I mean, so, I mean, it's going to be hiccups. Yeah. I mean, mean, that's just, that's just what it is. I mean, every, every single week, this is going to, every single week, this is going to happen. Every I just, single wow. week. I just finished my game preview for next week to post to the website. This is the second one I've written. <laughs> I finished the Love at Westminster preview, found out that they were I, – I, and just, now, just do three or four. You might make one of those next time. Yeah, well, we quick, we I'll, better text Carl at the break, by the way. I, I want to mention – um, uh, Plenty of Mr. games. Mr. Hines Plenty had mentioned, had mentioned the, the numbers and how they're trending in the state. I, I track mm-hmm. these faithfully every day. So we were – about mid-July through early August, we were over 3,000, like 3,200 cases a day. And now we're down to more like 24, 23, mm-hmm. 2,500 oh, 20. cases a day, which is, it's better. That's good. But that's, yeah. we're, we're kind of plateauing there now, and we're still not low enough. So my biggest fear, though, is that people have been doing a better job. The numbers are going in the right direction. And they're going to think when they see football on TV next Thursday night or this coming Saturday or they go to a stadium we're back. next Friday— we did it. Everything's everything's you know, normal. Throw off the mask. Hey. I, I'm worried people will relax. And this yeah. is like you got an opponent down and you got to keep piling on so they can't yeah. come back. That's what this is all about. It's what is they'll saying? It just means more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, but I will say this. I'm out a lot. I yeah. travel a lot. And I have seen more mask in the last two weeks at everywhere. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying it's 100 percent. And I'm not saying it's right or wrong if you're not yeah. wearing. No, I get it. But I'll tell you this. I have seen more mask. I sit out here today at eight at Sports and Social across the street, and I sat outside, and I probably watched 50 people walk by, and 45 of them had masks. Yeah. Two weeks ago, yeah, may have been 50%. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you this, though. Those numbers going down we're talking about and those masks you're seeing, those things are connected. Yep. So there's definitely a pattern there. Brookwood game with Colquitt is canceled. Confirmed. There you go. Canceled. So that's just the first two weeks. So, yeah. I mean, look, it is can what the, it is. Can reschedule, though, maybe? They're not going to reschedule no, Definitely those. not. No, yeah. Those are non-region games. Yeah, so, so, this, no, so yeah. Colquitt has no, moved no to doubt. week three, mm-hmm. and Brookwood will probably eat one. So they'll be minus a game unless somebody else has ones open. So There you go. 680 of the Fan High School Athletic Roundtable brought to you by Georgia Farm Bureau and my MRI guy. When we come back, we'll talk to Georgia Tech head coach, Coach Collins. Jeff Collins will join us here on the Fan. You can find us on social media at 680thefan, at Mansell247, at Mooneyham on air, at Doug Conkle, and at Tug Cowart. 
a lot of uh, ways to find us and connect with us across the social media platforms. Like you said, uh, you've, uh, you're have you listening to 680 The Fans High School Athletic Roundtable. We'll get to uh, Coach Jeff Collins, head coach at Georgia Tech, coming up in about uh, two or three minutes. Guys, any takeaways from uh, Dr. Hines other than the bad news? I got one. I, Turn your a, mic on, guys. We have another <laughs> game scheduled, so I'm going to go ahead and do you a favor right now. Do not write up a preview for Prince Avenue Christian at Wesleyan on October 2nd because every time we bring up a game on this show, mm. it doesn't survive the next week. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> Dr. Hines did that to us already. That'd Sorry, be a great ball game, by the way, if we're, if we're able to get it here. True. Yeah, no. Cons- go ahead. Go ahead. Consistency. I mean, yeah. he's been consistent, yeah. and, and I like what he said. I don't like that we had a hiccup, but they understand it's going to happen. Yeah. I mean, Colquitt is out the first two weeks. And we're just going to move on. They already know there's going to be hiccups down the line. They're talking about buys in the bracket. I never thought about that. Yeah, yeah. that's interesting. That's you can win. You can win two games, and next thing you know, you got to buy in the quarterfinals. Yeah. So don't think teams aren't going to start looking down the line. <laughs> going, Wait a minute. If we're number two, yeah, and we win these, just two start weeks, playing the shell game. We'll get a buy in week three. Yeah, you know right. what I mean? So it's one of those things. Yeah, yeah, I hated to bring it up again, the 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 playoff question, but it is so Good important. Yeah. I mean, look, we we have 32 times eight. That's how many teams make. Was that two? 256. Thank you, 256. All right, I was going to be right. Thank you. Uh, but uh, 256 teams make the playoffs in the state of Georgia now. That's, yeah, that's almost half the field or more than half the field now. Great. So it's an important question that means so much to these communities. And when you're trying to figure out who's going to fill these spots, uh, it's really something. But I expected that answer on the the power rankings yeah no he's he's uh he's very candid and i certainly appreciate him uh another guy that uh looking forward to talking to this evening is the head coach at georgia tech jeff collins jeff we appreciate your time coach thank you so much for uh for coming on and talking some high school football with us yeah thanks for having me on yes sir so high school football in georgia is i mean it's a it's the heartbeat of the entire state and then it's so closely connected with with college football at the level where you are how important is it for you to be able to see high school football actually being played versus maybe even on a huddle video but actually getting out to some games right well uh i'm actually a product of georgia high school football and uh, you know i played at rockdale county high school out in conyers and uh just the coaches the uh community uh everything that surrounds uh, the high school football experience in the state of Georgia made me fall in love with this game uh, and made me be the person that wanted to be in the position that I'm in, I'm in uh, right now as the head coach of Georgia Tech. And, uh, you know, one of my best you know memories of last year um, was actually getting to go to high school football games, uh, the Friday night lights uh, in the state of Georgia. It's it's uh, there's not a lot of places that compare to the passion uh, the energy, the excitement, and uh, and to be honest with you, the level of football and the level of coaching uh, that exists in this state. Coach uh, Doug Conkle here. We, we had uh, GHSA Executive Director Robin Hines all this right before you, and we talked about how different places around the state will have diminished capacity in their stadiums. Now, you're going to have that same issue at Georgia Tech. I think about 11,000 there, and you might be on the road and have no fans. How's that going to feel for you and, and, again, for these high school kids as they play in front of smaller crowds, potentially no crowds? Sure. Well, what, one of the biggest core principles in our philosophy uh, in our whole program is that it doesn't matter the circumstance, the crowd size, uh, any of those things. If we have to play in a, in a Waffle House parking lot <laughs> with nobody there, uh, we're going to put the ball down and bring our own energy, bring our own juice, and uh, be ready to play and compete at a very high level. And, uh, you know, that's a core principle uh, that we constantly talk about in our program. Now, in the past, that hasn't been an issue, uh, but now – just that core thinking and uh, every single day matters, every practice matters, every scrimmage matters. Uh, all of those things are encapsulated in our mindset. And uh, we'll see this year that uh, that hopefully it pays off. Coach Collins, Rusty Mansell here of 24-7. I'm from Rome, Georgia, live up in Rome. And, and two of your players are two young men that I have known since they were middle school kids, yep. uh, brothers Jaquan and Jemias Griffin, tell me one thing about those kids, and can you talk Tyrone, their father, into having one more because he's signed <laughs> four D1 kids so far. I tell Tyrone all the time, man, you're doing something right. There's no doubt. We're, we're blessed to have both of them. Uh, you know, Jaquan is a defensive tackle for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's had a tremendous offseason. Uh, he's had a tremendous preseason camp. Uh, I don't know if you've seen him lately. I he, have uh, not. He cut his hair. Uh, he had that. He had long hair. Yeah. and. Uh, he cut it, and he's 
Uh, he's playing at a really, really high level. Great motor, great energy, uh, great pass rusher in the interior part of the defensive line. And uh, Jemias uh, was the Gatorade Player yeah. of the Year in the state of Georgia. Sure was. First team USA Today All-American. Uh, I thought that was one of the biggest uh, recruiting wins that we've had since we've been here mm -hmm. in our first recruiting class in a short recruiting cycle. You know, a young man that had offers from just about everybody yep. and uh, really didn't have much interest in Georgia Tech, even though his brother went to school here. And then we came here, and I obviously got to give hats off and credit uh, to Shard Choice, our running backs coach, did a great job developing relationships. And I still remember the, uh, yeah. the home yeah. visit with his dad going by his work. And, uh, you know, the, both of them, when they came back from quarantine, uh, the dad had put them through it. Oh, man. They came back in shape, ready to go, the right demeanor, and uh, ju just really proud of both of them. I tell people all the time, one of the biggest keys I know how you, you have to, to make this decision, does the kid love football? Does the kid love recruiting more than football? Those two kids right there, there's no issues. They, they love, love football ball. more than anything else. Yep, they love ball. They, they're doing a great job for us. Really excited for them. Good, yeah. good to hear. Jemias, one of the great – Oh, high man. school football running backs from middle school yeah. I've ever seen from yeah, middle school later. from yeah. middle school on because I, right. I kept getting all those you know that team was so good and I knew when they beat McKeatron in that's middle school that's when we started hearing about him that's when teams. that's when that job yeah. came open all these people started calling me and I told Coach Collins I told everybody if you want a job you better get the Rome job because this yeah. seventh and eighth grade team <laughs> and right. they won two state championships should have won three yeah, yeah. well, well they, yeah. they've got another team coming up too yeah, by the definitely. way yep hey his best run Saturday in the scrimmage. Uh, we had an unfortunate bad snap that didn't even get any, anywhere close to the quarterback. And I think Jemias popped it off or uh, picked it up and ran for about 28 mm -hmm. on a complete busted play. Yep. Uh, j just a great competitor, great kid. That yeah, sounds about right. Coach, uh, Chris Mooneyham here. You, you, part of what I loved about you taking this job, you getting this job, was that you knew how to market the city. We've talked yep. about it in great detail. I, I'll not dive into all that. But, but I will bring it up in regards to getting the kids on campus. Uh, getting them in the stadium, getting them there at night to see the skyline, things of that nature. Uh, tell us about the challenges of dealing with recruiting in the, uh, here it is again, guys, the age of COVID-19. Yeah, so one of the big things, I don't know if you can see it right here. 404. Uh, here for the 404, this is actually one of our uh, our off-season conditioning teams. This is one of the hoodies uh, that the 10 kids on the best team in the off-season got, and uh, that's just marketing, branding. Uh, we've been very aggressive. Uh, with our presence on social media, uh, the platform that we give our guys to use. And, uh, you know, we co-sign them throughout the social media, tag them and post and all those things. Uh, we've got a tremendous coaching staff with great energy, uh, technologically savvy. Uh, a lot of the guys that I brought with me, uh, half of the staff played at Georgia Tech. Uh, and I think another half of them are from the great state of Georgia. And uh, they know what this city's about. They know what this school is about. And, uh, you know, they know we have a chance to build something really special uh, here in Atlanta. You know, if you think about really, I think it's 12 of the last 14 national champions have come within a five hour radius of the city of Atlanta. Some of the best, best high school coaching, some of the best high school players in America are right in that five hour radius and right in our home state. And, uh, you know, we've embraced being in Atlanta. Uh, we've embraced being Atlanta's college football power. And, uh, you know, I was here growing up when Georgia Tech was the team that everybody talked about. And I was a young coach back in the late 90s, early 2000s. We were on college game day. We were in the top 10 every year. We were playing in New Year's Day bowl games, ACC championships. That's what Georgia Tech is to me. That's the Georgia Tech that I know and love. That's the Georgia Tech that I was born and raised on in the city of Atlanta. And just to have the opportunity to be the head coach, I know this city. I love this city. When I talk about it, when I preach about it, when I sell it, it is genuine because there's a genuine love for this place in this city uh, that lives and breathes in our building every day. You can see the passion, Coach, that you have, no doubt about it, and, and you can hear it in your voice. And I think everybody uh, just recognizes it immediately. It's very clear. And, of course, the fan here, 680, is the flagship for Georgia Tech football, so make sure you're listening to the Jackets here when uh, when we get uh, football season kicked off. But I want to ask you uh, something that comes up because my son is a 10th grader at Alpharetta, and, and he and his buds, you know, they, they talk about – 
you know, getting recruited one day and, and how awesome and how fun that will be in that, that entire process. But, but right now there's just a lot of question marks around the recruiting process because it's hard to see, you know, some are, are kids getting to play. What is it that you're doing and what would you recommend parents and kids are doing to make sure they do get seen by eyes like yours? You know, if they have that desire to come play at Georgia tech or, or any co college football program across the country. Yeah, so we, we've I've got an unbelievable recruiting staff led by our general manager Patrick Suttis. Uh, they scour over tape. They were watching uh, 2023 kids today. Uh, we had a morning practice, and I hear them out in the hallway, you know, wearing masks and popping in and out of offices and things. They're watching 2023 kids. Obviously, I can't talk specific. Of course, but we are. Uh, doing deep dives in every uh, we start with our, our city first we start with our state first and then we go uh, you know beyond that border to the next phase of it but just you know making sure they're doing the right things in their high school program uh, academics is key especially you know we're one of the top four academic schools in America um, so that those kind of things are very important uh, over the summer there were virtual combines we would get the links and our recruiting staff would scour through those and uh, constant building relationships. And, uh, you know, one of the biggest pieces, too, is making sure if I'm a young man that's playing high school football, whether I'm eighth, ninth, set, whatever the grade may be, make sure your coaches know what your goals are, what your hopes are, what your dreams are, what you want to get out of this experience and places you might be interested in that you do want to play college football. And when they hear that passion and they understand what you want to do, you know, they'll make sure they, they market you and promote uh, you to that end. Now, I'll be honest with you. I told my coaches that all the time in high school and, you know, was begging them to get me a Georgia Tech offer. And I ended up being a walk on at Western Carolina University. <laughs> I had passion, uh, but just my tape didn't necessarily back it up. <laughs> uh, but I ended up being a three year start at Western Carolina. And now I'm the head football coach at Georgia Tech. So you know, it all pays off. There Get you in go. where you fit in, right? That's right. Anywhere yeah. you can play. I like it. Well, Coach, Coach Collins, we certainly appreciate your time and uh, we want to wish you the best of luck this year and uh, y'all go hit them hard. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thank coach. you, Coach. 680 The Fans High School Athletic Roundtable brought to you by Georgia Farm Bureau and my MRI guy. Guys, just really quick, uh, he talks about the recruiting area. I've, I've been in debates with, with folks about this for years and years when it comes to Georgia Tech. And I always remind people, from the state of Georgia, I've run these numbers every single year. Over the last decade, anywhere from 14 to 16.5% of all National Football League players, Georgia natives. 14 to 16.5% Georgia natives mm. in the last decade. Yeah. Those are the numbers. That tells you what Georgia is producing as far as top flight talent. That's not even talking about the numbers of the kids that go on to play major college football. You know, Rusty and I on, on our recruiting show said many times that uh, – a plane ticket to Atlanta for an assistant coach is an easy way to keep your recruiting budget down because there's so many players you can see at one time. Imagine living in Atlanta, how yeah. small your recruiting budget yeah. can be. There you go. Uh, Want to go back out to the phones and uh, bring in Adam Clack. Of course, he is the head coach at Milton High School. Coach, thank you for your time. We appreciate you joining us on The Fan. So uh, we're, we're going to get back to uh, to Coach. We'll get back to him in just a little bit. Uh, any any thoughts on uh, what uh, Coach Collins said? Uh, I go back to him saying how well coached the kids are in the state of Georgia. Yeah. I mean, I hear that. I have heard it from years and years and years. I, I talk to a lot of college coaches, and everybody that recruits this state tells me one thing. The state of Georgia kids are ready to play. Yeah. I, I was in, an, in Alabama last week. Coaches asking me, one of the coaches there was asking me, hey, you know, next time a job comes open, let me know. Because, number one, they pay here. Mm -hmm. They take care of their assistants. Mm -hmm. And the state of Georgia invests in their coaching. And you can, like Chris to say, you can see our product. Yeah. You can see the product. I was in Milton. We're going to talk to Coach Clack. I was in yeah. Milton uh, two weeks ago. And and not just saying it because he's on here. Those are That's one of the most efficient practices you'll see. I mean, they're constantly moving. I'll go some places. It's not like I'll go some places. That's great, but wasted movement, wasted yeah, movement, right? Yeah. Very efficient because one group was in this end zone. They did a special. I never seen. I have to ask Coach Clyde. They did a special teams drill where they were trying to keep guys in the lane, and they had two kids going at all times. Mm -hmm. Quarterbacks were down here repping another. Was, everybody was going, but I've never seen a special team where they had everybody involved. It wasn't just eleven guys 
running down the lane, staying, you know, just la di da. I mean, these kids were blocking, trying to keep you in the lane, uh, condensing down coverage and those types of things. So it was just little bitty things yeah. that separate the state of Georgia from some of these other places I go. Now, Coach Clack, uh, head, head football coach at Milton High School, we appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us on Zoom tonight. Yeah, man, I've been looking forward to this all week. <laughs> all right, all right. Let me tell you, my man's coming in here fiery. I, you know what? I'm just going to let you uh, answer because as you were sitting there, did you hear uh, Rusty talking about the special teams drill? Uh, yeah. Um, you know, for, appreciate all the, um, you know, kind of words from Coach Collins and you guys about the, the coaching and, and the state of uh, football in Georgia. And I, I echo that. Uh, my peers and, and the colleagues around the state are, are second to none. And we learn so much from each other. We learn so much from, you know, Coach Collins and, and Georgia Tech staff, who's so accommodating. Um, and probably some of the stuff that you saw probably picked up from them. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, we were trying, um, you know, kind of this, we call it kind of our camp week right now because we still have a, a little bit of time before uh, we play. Um, and something we were wanting to do in the spring and over the summer was essentially just kind of create some some special teams competition, um, you know, drills, the same four drills, going to do them um, for a couple weeks, got teams competing, uh, and just really more before we get into the scheme, we want to see those guys kind of compete. And purposely, we didn't overcoach it. We wanted them to kind of implicitly learn these things and and kind of figure out by by winning the drill. Yep. Uh, I think, Russ, you probably saw yeah, it was man. Our, our mug drill where we had three guys – trying to block uh, and mug off the line while the other three guys were going down and we had a returner going. And yep. I mean, what better way to teach trail technique and teach a returner how to, how to <clears throat> press a point and hit than doing that. You know, it's mm -hmm. one of those things we typically overcoach and um, we just kind of giving the guys the opportunity to figure out on their own and compete and have some fun. Coach, I've been all over the state of Georgia from, from Thomasville to, to Rabin County this year. And I've watched what you guys have done. What challenges have you faced specifically at Milton to try to make sure you're going to get to this kickoff in a couple of weeks? What has been those things? It's like, and listen, we everybody had to work hard to get here, but what is one thing, two things that like we really had to focus on to make sure we're going to get to this point in a couple of weeks? Well, um, you know, just kind of, Kind of what we're talking about, they, we, and, and this is not unique to Milton. This is so many people in this state. I mean, it's a 365 job, and, mm -hmm. and we have a blueprint of what we like to do, and we take a lot of pride in, in how we attack January, February, March, April, May, June, July, and, you know, you've had to pivot, pivot, and pivot. Yep. And, and, you know, we have a mantra of sudden change in our program. Um, and, you know, what's really awesome is starting in March, when we had this first Zoom meeting with our team and talking about the opportunities that are in front of us, you know, yeah, there are obstacles, but we can turn them into opportunities if we do this better than everybody else. Our kids have responded just amazingly. I, I had a meeting with them virtually today and just telling them over and over, I, I just am, am astonished and, and amazed at the resilience in this group, the positivity in this group. Um, and so to your point, when you're together, you got to make every every day count. You you, you got to have a great plan. You you got to know exactly what is important right now, and you got to go out and attack it. Um, and I feel really really good about all the different levels of work, from virtual to to sending them workouts to to having the the small group setting to to advancing to the the mid sized group. You know, not being able to have our offense and defense together until darn near, you know, August, but, but then getting three really, really good weeks of work in like you saw the other day mm -hmm. and, you know, feel really good about where we are and, and just looking forward to, uh, you know, finally getting, getting to uh, kick that thing off. <laughs> hey, Coach Clack, Doug Conkle, I, I want to go ahead and thank you, A, for one of the best memories I've ever had broadcasting sports when I called your upset of Colquitt County for the state title a couple years back. Um, a tremendous memory. I, I know you'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. It was it was really the, the best time I've ever had in the booth watching that game. And one of the things that really shown through in that game was something we're talking about right now, and that is your attention to detail and, and how important the little things are into the overall success of the team. Is there any one or two details right now that you worry about more than others about being able to, to maintain during this unusual time and preparing your team? I would say the the three details um, is is basically your overall conditioning. You know, just being able to, to start and stop. 
you talk about lifting weights and, and, you know, your strength, you normally can maintain that for two, three weeks uh, without drastic drop-offs as long as you're not, you know, completely sedentary. But, you know, when the type of shape we get into, and we run a lot, we take a lot of pride in that, you can start losing and, and seeing diminishing, uh, you know, diminishing those gains in 48 hours to, to 72 hours if you're not staying with it. So I would say number one, just the type of shape that we're accustomed to being in. Uh, but number two and three is, is tackling and ball security. I mean, th- those little details that win football games, um, you know, it, you're going to have to be smart enough to figure out your scheme and, and figure out how advanced you can get and how dialed back you can get. Um, you know, it doesn't take a lot of a lot of scheme to win if you do it right. Uh, but there's no substitution for tackling and ball security. You're, you're going to win and lose football games with that right there. Uh, Coach Chris Mooneyham here. I, I actually was about to bring up tackling and ball security. By my numbers, I got a final stat pack on you guys, so we'll see if I've got these numbers uh, correct. I know I'm going to be close. You guys enter 2020 having lost uh, your top five tacklers, nine of 20 roughly from last year, but you're in a great spot now at Milton where you guys, I know sometimes coaches hate to hear the term reload program. Some coaches love it, obviously. No matter what you think about it, you guys are in a good spot now in the history of this program to where you can sustain losses like that and still be a top 10 caliber team. How do you feel about your 2020 version of the Eagles? Uh, We're, we're real excited about this group. Uh, And, you know, to your point, good teams should lose five or six of their top tacklers. Right. Uh, Every year you should, you should have a a senior class that's primed and ready to go. And that's just the nature of the beast. And and you love that. You love those seniors to come in and produce. Uh, But what we try to do in our program, um, we, we have a, a two position philosophy and, it, and it's kind of unique. Uh, you know, not everybody's going to play offense. Not everybody's going to play defense. Nobody's going to, going to start both ways, but starting in spring, man, we we're teaching those guys two positions so that we can make sure that we can get them on the field when needed. Uh, I'm sure we're going to talk about, uh, you know, LT here a little bit. Oh, we uh, definitely are. <laughs> R- Rusty's sure already moving. Somebody. Rusty's already moving up into the mic to ask you that yeah, question. Yeah, we'll <laughs> save that one for a minute. But but by doing that, and, and then with our special teams, we're able to get lots of guys reps. Um, I believe in getting your best players on the field when it matters the most. I mean, you know, you talk about the 2018 game. Paul Teo is going to play 20 snaps on yep. defense and that, especially when they're inside the 20. You know, that's the other thing. you you got to win that red zone. Um, so that's, that's when you load up and put your bullets in there. But between those 20s, I want to see 22 guys starting. I want to see guys rolling in. I want to see uh, lots of people playing. And I think that's how you develop a program. Coach, there's going to be times when people are going to say the football gods were not with you and the football gods are with you. Last November, when a young man walked into your school as a freshman, and I mean a specimen walks into your school Talk a little bit about LT Overton, who I've got a chance to to meet. I talk, had specific talks with you. Uh, it's no secret now, he's the number one sophomore in the country. He is the only sophomore we have ever invited to the All-American Bowl before his sophomore year uh, in Georgia on the defensive side. Uh, we invited Eric Gilbert after his sophomore year. But uh, as, a, as a defensive player, I wanted to be in tight end. But talk a little bit about once I met him and everything you told me, this kid is special, and I'm not talking about just on Friday nights. This young man, uh, tell the story about him saying not coaching hard enough. It just it just gave me chills to hear you talk about it. Yeah, um, you know, it, you, you're right. I mean, there, there's certain guys who are who are blessed with DNA, and and you know, there there's there's a lot of those guys who sure. who are blessed with with DNA, and and they walk in and they look the part. Um, but I tell you what, with this young man, you know, he's been surrounded with great people his whole life. He, he comes from a strong, strong family who, who, you know, definitely pour into him in every way that they can. Um, Dad played Oklahoma. Mom played volleyball, Kentucky, correct? That's right. That's yeah, right. Not, not bad genes. And no, no, great genes, obviously. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, the word I, I guess I would use is stoic. I mean, yeah. he just comes in and you can tell there, there's a different look in his eye. And his mom told me, she goes, you know, he's quiet, but don't, don't worry. He's listening. He is always listening. And, and she is spot on because he wants to be coached. He wants to be worked. Um, and when they were doing, he, he came in and he played basketball on, you know, the number three team in the, in, in the state who started two freshmen and two sophomores. He's one of the freshmen averaging a double, double. Um, and at the end of the season, when, when, you know, our basketball coach, coach Whitehart asked him in their exit interview, you know, basically what what 
what do you need from us? Or, or you know, what, what's your take on the season? He said, Coach, I just wish y'all coached me a little bit harder. I mean, uh, I mean, that's start thinking like, man, that, I was hey, getting after you. You know what I mean? <laughs> wow. Yeah, you don't said. hear that as a freshman. You don't hear that much, fella. Right. You know, and, and, you know, we had a Saturday practice the other day, and, and we've been trying to go in the evenings because I'm a little worried about the heat acclimation and things of that nature. And, and we ended up going kind of early, uh, early noontime, and it got really hot. We got after it, and then we had a good run afterwards. And, and you know, there's guys that are just gassing, and that was the point. And you can just see it in a kid like his, his eyes. He loves that. Yeah. It's like a, you know, it's like, like a sled dog, you know, when yep. he's tired that he knows he put in a good day's work. And, um, you know, that's a really cool, a really, really cool and powerful combination when you got somebody with that type of, that type of DNA, but also that type of mentality. So. He's going to be spe he's special to watch. I know you're going to enjoy that one. I'll never forget Joey King telling me when, when Trevor Lawrence was a sophomore, he said, we know every day to enjoy this. This is something different and not trying to put – and he is number one player in the country. I'm not shying away from that. He's got two more, three more years of high school football, but there is something different about that young man, and I know you guys in Miltrick excited to coach him for three more years. And I tell you another thing about that, it's kind of like a, I was an old wrestling coach too. It's kind of like a wrestling room. You know, when you get guys like that, there's going to be somebody else who's going to be right there with them and they're going to sharpen each other. Oh yeah. Right. And that's, and that's what I see going on in our team right now. And it's yep. not just LT, it's, it's Jack Nickel. Nickel. Yeah. Young man committed to Notre it's Dame, by Devin the way. Farrell, it's, it's uh, Jordan McDonald. I yep. mean, we've got guys who are, who are young and talented and, and they're hungry and yep. they're, you know, it's a it's a healthy one upsmanship. They are they are competing with each other every single day. Um, you know, just just trying to get after it to get better, but then also celebrate one another. And that's a you know, that's what we're all about at Milton. One more, one more coach, and then uh, we'll get ready to the, for the top of the hour. I, you actually sort of brought it up again. You, you kind of led me into the question. I, I want to know your thoughts on uh, kids Welcome. playing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wanna, you got a future in this business. Uh, <laughs> what's your thought on kids playing multiple sports? You got a, a handful, maybe even six or seven guys on your roster who will play this year, at least some semblance of, of snaps, who are basketball players, multiple sport kids. That was the first time I had the opportunity to see LT last year. was in the state semifinals, as a matter of fact, while I, when I was on the play by play duties i couldn't believe him then and then i started thinking about all the kids that were on both the basketball team and the football team what are your thoughts on multi-sport kids uh, uh not specializing in just one sport well uh i mean i think that uh you could see that's from the culture of the school first and foremost um you know, Milton, just by, by happenstance, was hiring three, uh, the, the big three coaches, uh, basketball, football, and baseball all in the same year. And you could tell that, you know, obviously I am a big proponent of it, and that was something that probably came through in, in my interview, but so is Coach Whitehart with basketball, and Coach Husing with baseball, and our lacrosse team as well. Um, so that that's clearly something from from Coach Silvestri and and uh, Principal Jones that they were looking for, and they found guys who 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 supported that. But taking it a step further, I've always said it. I was a three sport guy, but when I look back on my early career, I didn't put my money where my mouth was. I was constantly loading guys up in the off season, making them feel guilty if they miss football, but then telling them I wanted to play other sports. We've gone above and beyond, I believe with working uh, with coaches, um, basketball, baseball, uh, lacrosse. And sometimes it stinks, man. Sometimes you go to a seven on seven and you're missing two guys. Or sometimes, you know, you got to work out and, and you don't get all your guys in, in the weight room in the winter. But, you know, I came to, came to understand that if I have the best guys on my team in August, that we're going to be pretty darn good in November. Um, so, and that's kind of what matters the most to me. I want to say, Coach Clagg, thank you. We had to book you early in the week. We had to get our people with all of your people, your agency, to get approval. So we appreciate the three or four days approval we got to have you on tonight, man. Look hey, forward to seeing you. Gave me a lot of time to put in some work, man. <laughs> That's right. No, I love it. Very I, high I, level. Yeah, I love it. I, and I love your answer, Coach, about uh, multi-sport athletes. I, that. That's a great thing to hear because I, I know several of them. I have one. It's important to those kids to be able to to get on both fields because they really do love every game that they're able to play, and I just appreciate that coming from a head coach. Yeah, and, you know, and, and I, I say this, and maybe it sounds sacrilege as a football coach, but you don't have to love football as much as I do to be on my team as mm -hmm. long as you as long as you can commit and do what we're supposed to do when we're supposed to do it, you can love baseball more. You can love basketball more. You can love lacrosse more and yep. still be a great football player. And no doubt.
team. No doubt. No doubt about it. Uh, Coach Clack from Milton High School, we appreciate your time, man. Go hit them hard, and y'all have a great season. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks, Coach. Right, Thanks, thank Coach. You, Coach. Dude, what a breath of fresh air that guy is. I mean, you know, you know when, you, when you hear coaches talking about that, and, and I, you know, he doesn't come off as uh, as somebody who's just saying that. Yeah. That he's just he's just placating because he's supposed yeah. to say that. He he genuinely believes that it's okay that that when you go to a seven on seven, some of the guys aren't there because they are playing something different. Do you know how many people gave Milton a chance to beat Colquitt a couple years ago? One Probably not many. many. No. Yeah. Outside of Milton, he talked about how much he loves football. Wow. I know that for a fact. The first time I met him was signing day, about three weeks after he won that game. Walked up to him at, at, at Sports and Social across the street here. Yep. Shook his hand and said, hey, hey, coach, that was just a tremendous game. He wanted to sit down and start breaking it down. Yeah, He was right. like, what did you think I've, about our coverage in that third down I, play in the third I quarter? Have, I mean, he went into detail. I have told him this story. I was on the Colquitt sideline the first half of that game. And I'll be honest with you, I gave Milton no chance. I mean, that was the best Colquitt team by far. And that was the best team that's been in Georgia. 12 of their 15 games were running clocks. Mm-hmm. So I'm on this Colquitt sideline, and by the third series, let me just say that that staff— I know what you're going to say. <laughs> —were having very heated discussions, and mm-hmm. they were very confused. Mm-hmm. They were very confused at what Milton was doing to them. Yeah. And it got to where there was people not making the best decisions on that sideline. It carried over into the locker room of that Call game. some people their mm-hmm. jobs. And next thing you know, they were beat. Yeah. And that started with, with Adam Clack and that whole preparation for that week. Because I'm telling you right now, I'd have bet my house, 401Ks. Uh, not if you would have called me. I'm just saying. I don't want to brag, but uh, there was there is one guy in the room who gave him a chance. And I, 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 knew, I, I will back him up. He I did knew, say it. Yeah. I, I remember Milton was, I knew it. Milton wasn't supposed to be good enough to even get to that game. That's I knew why it. nobody gave him a chance. Milton and Archer were my darlings that year. I got one of them to win a state title, and the other one got to the semifinal. You, you got him. You got I'm just that. telling you. Yeah, yeah, look, there's a difference saying, in saying, uh, I just I thought I it mean, was it, happening. It, it, my and support I helped them means to do it. a lot to these teams. Well, it, okay. it wasn't a it wasn't a uh, USA Russia upset 1980. Yeah, right, right. But the majority <laughs> of the state, man, right, it's just not happening because they that cult, when Coke came out. I was like, Whoa, we're about talking about a, a team that was number, maybe going to be number one in the nation Good. if they win yeah. that game. You, yeah. know the, you know, the big deal, what they were arguing about all week, they were trying to figure out who they were going to play the next week in the ESPN game. Yes. Mm-hmm. They wanted right. the, they, yeah. the, the whole week, they were arguing. They did not want to get on a plane. They wanted somebody to come to Colquitt. Yeah. And little old Milson just sitting out there going, uh-uh. okay, okay, uh-uh. that's what you're worried about. Yeah. Be worried about that. And that's right. And sure enough, man. It what, was great. A tremendous I, win for that community. I remember, I remember watching it, seeing it, listening to it, and seeing our very own Brandon Joseph on the sideline there at the uh, at the stadium. It was really remarkable to, uh, to, to, and, these, and to relive that. Too. One of these days, I write a book on what I saw coming out of the locker room on the Colquitt side afterwards. <laughs> Boy, it was, it was not... Well, it, it was not a pretty sight coming out of that locker room. Yeah, it cost it cost some guys some jobs. It did. It was it's ultimately why he's not there anymore. Yeah, Thanks there you go. Snowballing there. You're listening to the 680 The Fan High School Athletic Roundtable brought to you by Georgia Farm Bureau and my MRI guy with Rusty Mansell, Doug Conkle, and Chris Mooneyham. My name is Doug Cowart. We will come back and uh, have conversations with the head coach from uh, Miller Grove High School as well as, well as Douglas County, uh, the head coach there, and uh, and talk about how your kids – can get recruited? How can they be seen? Even in the, and I'll steal this from Mooneyham, even in the age of COVID, because that that is a huge question. How do I get myself in front of coaches that matter, coaches that may want to have me play for them? Football for sure, but other sports as well. We'll talk about it next on The Fan 680 and 93.7. And the fan staff is here to get you the latest updates. This is the Georgia High School Athletics Roundtable presented by Georgia Farm Bureau and MyMRIGuy.com with Tug Coward, Chris Mooneyham, Doug Conkle, and Rusty Mansell exclusively on The Fan. Our roundtable coverage on The Fan brought to you by Georgia Farm Bureau and My MRI Guy. And I appreciate certainly Mooneyham and Doug Conkle, Rusty Mansell being here. My name is Tug Cowart. Um, we're going to get to... Uh, Miller Grove head coach Lee Hannon, just a moment, but I want you to know that uh, probably about 8.45, so about 40 minutes from now, we're going to get into a topic of conversation about your kid. How do you get your kid recruited? How does your child, the, the, the kid that you've watched play football or other sports since they were little bitty, how do they get a college scholarship, especially in 2020 when there's so many restrictions and so many hoops and obstacles 
We'll get uh, Rusty Mansell, who's an expert in that field to begin with. We'll get his take on how to do that. We'll do that at 840. First now, uh, let's head to uh, Miller Grove and talk to the head coach, Lee Hanna. Head, uh, head coach uh, Hanna, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much for, uh, for jumping in with us. Do we have coach? Well, maybe not. Maybe not. We'll we'll, oh, we'll get him. We'll get him in just a moment. Yeah, we'll get him in just a moment. But um, you know, being being recruited, I think, is something that that is on the minds of kids every day, and it's on the mind of my son who plays ball. He plays football and baseball at Alpharetta, and and I know by social media that all of these kids are continuously putting out huddle videos and putting out videos so just the the possibility of somebody like jeff collins who was on with us earlier being able to see their film and go you know what that kid's got a chance well lee hannah's a great guy to talk about yeah. uh, when it comes to this you know not everybody is is colquitt county not everybody is lounge not everyone is uh, is valdosta uh marietta all of these these bigger programs a lot of these coaches take over these programs go to these programs knowing that they're trying to build something brick by brick like miller grove likes to say all the time trying to help kids get an education to to try to just further their lives simply go to a d2 program go wherever yeah. you can go and get an education coach hannah joining us on the uh, the fan the high school athletic roundtable uh coach thank you so much for your time can you jump in and, and maybe piggyback on that a little bit just talking about what you're doing there at miller grove to make sure that your guys are being seen in in the in a tough time to to be able to connect with anyone our guys like you say first of all thank you guys for having me yes sir um it's an honor to be on this show and be around some great individuals like yourself um but more importantly you got to be the face of the program i'm always in contact with college coaches so forth they're on the recruiting team they're at camp urging you to attend the right camps um because sometimes it can be about a financial gain um kids need exposure um the all all of the the internet source that are available is it's important you know be seen there like i tell my kids all the time there's a school for everybody it may not be the one for you but that you think you should go to but that's a school for everybody yeah, we talk all the time, Coach uh, Coach Lee Hanna from Miller Grove joining us. Uh, Chris Mooneyham here. Thanks for being with us. I, I love this dude. I love talking to him. He gets me fired up every time we uh, every time we speak. Coach, uh, we talk all the time about uh, building programs, trying to change a culture. That's part of what you're doing there at Miller Grove. Tell us about how it's going. Um, it's going. It's going. In which direction? I don't know, but it's going. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it's been good. It's been good. Um, uh, and I say that jokingly, I of say course. that jokingly, it's been good. Um, this school has been, this school has been known as a basketball program, right? Well, my kids now are buying into the academic process. You know, there's a, there's a great GPA, um, number system on my board that kids know about now. Um, you know, it's, it's just academics matter to me. You know, we it's, we do study table Monday through Wednesday, something I gained from my my mentors um, and Corey Jarvis, Coach Rodney Walker, and so forth. That grades matter. In in the three years at Baldwin, I got 18 kids in school. That was most in a three year span. Well, here at Miller Grove, in the two years I've been here, we we've been third in the county each year when it came to grades, and that's not by accident. You know, it's because I make it a priority, and my kids know that. You know, at the end of the day, I call it a, a, a domino effect. If you're not taking care of your academics, coaches can't see you. If coaches can't see you, you you're not getting a scholarship. If you're not getting a scholarship, you're back on Panola Drive or or Covenant Highway. So again, grades matter. Hey, Coach Doug Conkle here. And again, you know, I, I want to speak. speak for, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Chris. No, no, I'm, no, no keep, keep going. Keep going, Coach. Because my, my administration, I had a coach once tells me, chase administration, not athletes. Because if we're not buying in on the same page, then we're, we're, not, we're not going in the same direction. So my administration, I have administration um, here, Dr. Percy, and the rest of the administration that supports what we're doing here, we support our kids. You know, at the end of the day, it's about academics, ensuring that grades matter, holding kids accountable. And introducing respect, accountability, you know, and, and making kids just do the right thing. Well, Coach, I can tell long hours are part of this, too, because you're, you're talking to us from your office still at after, after 8 o'clock tonight. So I'm sure everyone appreciates the work that you put in. 
Your first game is scheduled, if things haven't changed and things have changed quickly, as we already found out tonight, you're scheduled to take on Lakeside on uh, the, uh, the 11th of September, correct? Is that still on the books? <laughs> Even you have to think about it. <laughs> No, that's 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 incorrect. Um, okay. Because the the Cavs moved it back, um, right. so we won't start until October. Okay. We won't start until October, so we'll go October 9th against Drew Hills, and that's supposed to be homecoming for us. Um, so that's the first game we'll get. Um, I'm I'm praying and hoping that I could schedule uh, October second game here um, before long. But again, that's and it starts region play uh, out the gate October 9th against Drew Hill, supposed for homecoming. Um, and, and speaking on the cab, they've tried to do it the right way. They have. You know, we back, we started workouts, summer workouts later than anybody. We're starting games later than anybody. So again, we try to do it the right way. Um, Dr. Watson, our super, our new superintendent, she has a tough decision to make, as all the superintendents. Um you, you're going to be criticized either way, whether you choose to play or whether you hold out. You know, it's, it's a tough decision to make sitting in that chair. But at the end of the day, the ultimate goal is our kids' safety. So I think, you know, no one wants to go out there and say, hey, I'm going to put our kids' jeopardy, our lives in jeopardy. No, that's not the case. It's a tough decision that needs to be made. And they've tried to do it the right way and keep us protected and safe. Coach Rusty Mansell here. We saw you were on the day I went through some of your tape and some of your players haven't been out to Miller Grove in a couple of years. Tell me about Stephen Bacon. I like his tape. Watched him today. Tell me, tell me a little bit about him. What he's got going on because I think that's a young man right now that looks like he's flying under the radar a little bit. Rusty, you like him. I love him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's a elite leader of this team, the defense. Last year, he was the defensive MVP. And it's funny you asked about him, Rusty. He literally texted me the other day, and he asked me, Coach, do you think I have what it takes to make it to the league? And I had to be honest with it. I'm a numbers and facts person. Yep. You got to look at your your your, your, your numbers, your, 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 your statue, and so forth. You know, a lot of times it, it doesn't balance up at that size. He's about 5'10", about 195, 200, mm -hmm. but he's gotten faster. He's He's Built, he's he's bought into the program, coach. It's, it's at a point now. I don't even call the defense. He calls it. So wow. he's he's smart. He's a three point three point five kid. Um, just a leader. Didn't take any days off. Um, started in the program as a sophomore, and I had I was forced to play. And he bought bought in last year. Was a, a heck of a player on defense and and from the leadership aspect. And now he's taking it and just ran with it. Like you said, I've I've, I've coached some good ones, and he's wow. right up there with them now. Uh, just a, a born leader on and off the field. Let me get by. I'll get by there sooner than later, coach. Promise you, and uh, see if I can't help you jumpstart his recruiting a little bit. Sounds good. I definitely appreciate it, Rusty. Thank you. Uh, Coach, maybe you could send him uh, towards Presbyterian. What's a blue hose anyway? No, I already know the answer. Uh, I, I was going to say uh, you, you should tell everybody, first of all, what a blue hose is. And, guys, here's something that a lot of people don't know. There's a lot of Presbyterian guys that are coaching Presbyterian College. It is still college, right? It's been a while since I've covered them. Uh, that are coaching in this state. Tell everybody yes. about this this tree that's developed in the state of Georgia and over uh, in um, in West uh, South Carolina as well. A lot of Presbyterian Blue Hoes are coaching here in the state of Georgia. Oh, oh man, we're, we're roaming the sidelines everywhere in the state of Georgia. <laughs> Presbyterian Blue Hoes is a Scotsman, like a like an Irishman, so to speak, but he's a warrior. Um, like you said, a lot of us in this state, you know, uh, a great friend of mine, Travis, Travis Smith, the AD at, at Douglas County, um, um, Alan Rodemaker down at, 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 uh, Colquitt He's now, at Colquitt now yeah. former coach at Val Alster, um, Brett Garvin over at Sandy Creek head coach over there. Um, you know, uh, Corey Dickerson, defensive coordinator at Hart County, Benji Harrison at Habersham Central, um, former head coach at Central Gwinnett, Todd Walford. You know, just a, a, that's a plethora of blue holes. Um, Eric Godfrey at, at, at Parkview, the, 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 the Grunk, Grunkowski of, of, of you know, <laughs> the former, former heyday, you know, that's what they call him. Um, but it's, it's, it's a, it's a great bunch of guys in a, great fraternity of blue holes out here that you know have, have 
have paved the way for a lot of guys. And like you said, can always count on. Um, it's never a day I can I can't reach out and, and and speak football. It's just about life with these guys. Just great friends and and great relationships that we've built over the years. Coach, I appreciate your enthusiasm. It's so clear how much you love coaching, how much you love those kids. You know, a lot of times it, it seems like all that coaches would care about is football, but that is not the case, even if even if it's accused sometimes. And, and I appreciate the fact that you're so vocal about how much a good education means to a kid and, and how much that means to you and your program there at Miller Grove. We appreciate your time, and uh, we, we wish you nothing but the best of luck. I uh, hope you all hit them hard this year. Coach. coach Hannah. There See we go. Soon. Yeah, uh, thanks. Yeah, thanks, it, Coach. It's so good to talk to him. Ready for your history lesson real quick? Yes, sir. All right, so the Blue Hose Presbyterian, the mm -hmm. Scotch, and mm -hmm. the Irish in the Carolinas mm -hmm. were a big part of the volunteers that rose up and won yeah. the two critical battles in the South that turned the tide of the Revolutionary War. We would not be Americans, were it not, for the original Blue Hose. There you go, that. man. And I, I love did it. That, stopped at Camden uh, on my way on a family trip a couple years ago and bored my kids to death and learned a lot. That's I, a lot I my, love that stuff, though. That's a lot of my old history, my old family history. Oh, uh, really? That dates uh, back into South Carolina, the Gastons and, and all that jazz. So I happen to know a little bit about it. Man, some I kids wish. And some people who went to. I wish I had some history. I don't have, like, I'm a Heinz 57, man. You want to talk about somebody that's got a little bit of everything in there? I got, like, I always wanted to be that guy that could go find my genealogy and figure out where it was that, that I came from. And I can't. Yeah, mine's in like a meatpacking plant somewhere. That's about, <laughs> right. as, about as good as I At can At least do. you know that. I don't even know. I, I know I nothing. totally guess. I have no idea. I don't know if I want to know what you're... Let me tell you with that, Doug. Yeah. One no, thing about, no, about, no. about back to Coach Hannah for a second. <laughs> one, the one thing he said that really <laughs> stuck with me was that when his player, I'm sorry, last name was Bacon. What's the kid's first name? Stephen Bacon. Stephen, Stephen Bacon comes to him and asks him, "Do you think I can play in the league?" And, and coach is just straight up like what you're 5'10", 195. Let's talk about it. Yeah, we can talk about <laughs> let's it. Talk and you about can this. think about it, but let's make sure. Right. Obviously, the where he's going with that answer is you got to make sure you have options yeah. because the league is not an option for very many people. When you get down to the numbers, like he's saying, yeah. when you crunch the numbers, one percent of you know of one percent is going to make it every year. I, I, I may have some bad news here, guys, but I, uh -oh. I got to go ahead and, and, and divvy this out for anyone who may be listening. Uh, it's not Georgia-related. That's the good news. I was talking to, um, to Rusty about this a little bit earlier. I think there's a real chance that the state of Kentucky is not going to start on time. And they're slated to start on September 11th. It looks like the Commonwealth is going to have a meeting tomorrow uh, between their Department of Education and the KHSAA. And it doesn't look as though their season is going to start on time. The Department of uh, the Kentucky Department of Education, apparently behind the scenes, is really pushing for them to not start the season on time. They're going to. They're going to have some real butting of heads. I've got a guy up there who, who's been sending me information, and he said, Chris, this thing could get really, really ugly. Let me give you some numbers just really quick, Rusty, because I know you want to jump in here. 696 positive results COVID-wise just yesterday, seven new deaths. I'll let you measure the numbers and whether you think that's a sure. lot or not. I am not getting into that. I'm just giving you uh, numbers. And the numbers in the Commonwealth have risen almost every day over the last 10 days. So that's bad news. And this comes on the heels of 10 new deaths attributed to the virus on Tuesday. The real concern for government officials is that a lot of the people who are uh, contracting the virus over the last 10 days have been students. So, uh, you know, so we've you, kept track of the Southeast. That's sure. why I wanted to bring it sure. up for yeah. all of us. There's so many people in Metro Atlanta in the state of Georgia yeah. that come, of course, to Metro yeah. Atlanta from our neighboring southern states. Mm -hmm. I figured I'd get that information It out almost there. goes back to what Dr. Hines said in different areas. Yeah. There's different numbers. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, of and Kentucky could be in a, in, a, in a, you know, obviously with less population, but numbers like that is very serious. We talked about it with Dr. Hines two times in a row. Has he been watching Utah, Alabama, and Tennessee? And, and the answer is yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. When Georgia goes into the mix next week, because see, Florida doesn't start for another month. When the state of Georgia goes in, everybody yeah. in the country. Listen, I sat on a conference call yesterday for these kickoff games next week. Right. And I'm telling you now, they've got this down to the detail. They know these games are going to be on TV. These games are going to be watched nationwide. They do not want to give someone a reason to end up a viral video for the wrong reasons. Yeah. They're going to be mandatory mask yeah. in the crowds. And as you enter the stadium for these kickoff games, so uh, I, I think that Georgia and Kentucky will be a state that will probably watch what happens here as a kickoff. And it'll buy them some time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's okay if you delay until October the yeah. 1st. If you yeah. intend on playing those six or seven region games and then go in the playoffs. Yeah. It's just that type of year. Yeah, right? that's the that's the thing, though. Uh, delay, you can handle. 
right? It's it's postponement or cancellation. That's what you don't want to hear. Delays. I mean, delays not great, but. Like I would rather have delay than than the worst. Yeah, and, and Tug, you might have covered this at some point in your podcast um, about the coronavirus in general. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, the governor of Kentucky, uh, I think his name is Bashir, has been a guy who's really been uh, aggressive mm -hmm. since everything started. He was early in masks. He was mm -hmm. so these numbers don't seem big to us. They seem big to him mm -hmm. because Kentucky was a really good example of how to keep your numbers low for such a long time. And obviously this by their terms is an explosion. And he's I, I have no doubt he's the force behind the Department of Education making a move on the high school football season. The other big part of this conversation which we did not have last week and I'm glad I just remembered this that that, that you have to get into is whether or not if you're pushing back your season as a district, as a city, as a county, whatever it may mm -hmm. be, mm -hmm. are you receiving the backing of your high school association? Like Michigan also announced yeah. uh, last week, I think it was at the end of last week, that they're going to play a spring schedule. Now they're like the 15th or 16th they, school. They, they are intending to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. That's, that is, that's that what is, I'm getting into. Yeah. Right, and that's exactly what I'm getting into is can you actually play in the spring just I like the same situation North is North with Carolina. North Carolina too, right. yeah. I mean, can you actually do that? Like we're talking about with college football and with high school football, it's a completely you. different animal when you've got kids that play lacrosse and play football. Baseball. Baseball. Is basketball. Baseball Huge or, or basketball because yeah. a lot of these states are going to be starting their football seasons at the end of January or the beginning of February, and they all play basketball then. My so, guess is no. My guess is the, the answer is no. I can't. I can't I, see it. I, I Me either. It doesn't make sense it. to me whatsoever that, that a kid is going to say, you're, you're going to have to make the kids Guys, it'll be pandemonium it'll if be 16 it. states don't play football season to, to, this year. But get ready for it then. <laughs> to paraphrase yes, it Nick happen. Saban, it'll be JV ball. Yeah. It'll be because JV ball. Because baseball is going to take. It is but huge. Kids are going to take their, they're going to have to pick a sport. And we, I know the numbers in the spring. Yeah, what's right. going to happen? Yeah, baseball is so important. And and look, that's that's another thing when when we talk about getting your kids recruited. And 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 I'm sure that you yep. probably pay attention to that too because yep. Georgia is such a heavily recruited state for baseball across huge, the country. Huge. What, it, it, in comparison, and I don't know the answer, so this is not a loaded question. In comparison, football, baseball, what what is the difference? Football being the most recruited for the state. Let me tell you. Let me, let's let's talk a specific player, specific school. Dylan Logan. No, I know Dylan well. He plays uh, in the Georgia Jackets program. My son plays in as well. All-American quarterback at Brooklyn Brooklyn High School. Yeah. Real quick. Lives right if, down the road from him. If you. he had to choose, and, and I'm answering for him. Mm -hmm. Could be wrong. Mm -hmm. If he had to choose in February, March, and April what to play, Dylan Logan's going to play baseball. Yeah. So what happens to the Brookwood program? Right. Your best option at quarterback in a mm -hmm. long, many, many years mm -hmm. is going to play baseball. And that could happen a lot. It's just it's, – it's a hard situation to say we're going to play football in the spring because there's yeah. so much stuff going on. And and I think and I think that, uh, that I can't see North Carolina. I me either. Not see them do it. Me either. And no. and I'll even take that further into the college football realm. I, yeah. I struggled to see a a way that a spring program works at the college football level. And going back to what you said, Doug Conkle is JV. It's a JV sport. If if you don't have all your kids playing. Yeah, the top athletes will be playing their other sports because those coaches are going to want their top athletes playing sure. for them. Yep. And, you know, we shouldn't discount because we're here in Georgia, but the states up the eastern seaboard, North Carolina is probably one of them. Lacrosse is a big of deal. Of course it is, yeah. So that, that's as big a draw probably for a lot of those kids yeah, in Maryland, don't. the state of Maryland for sure. They don't have spring as much football. As baseball. They don't have spring football in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So it tells you when December is over with, they're, they're on another, they're on another right. sport. You, in the state of Georgia – Coach is thinking, God, I hope our baseball team don't make the playoffs. So, <laughs> so maybe we can have get everybody back. everybody back. <laughs> yeah. I hope so and so don't make the hundred and state because we can get him back that first two weeks of spring practice. Uh, that's a good yeah. one too. Is track. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look at Nick Chubb. Yeah. Uh, look, uh, the, the, uh, uh, another thing that you're going to find across the country is that some of these spring seasons are going to be eight man football because wow. they're not going to have as many. Some of the lower classifications in some of these states that are, you know, middle tier talent wise and middle tier population wise, they're going to be playing eight eight man For football. Vermont, it's going seven on seven. Are they really? October 1st. Wow. Did, did, they, did they make? Okay. Seven on seven. Seven on seven. You said Vermont. Vermont. But, okay. I mean, See, but that makes no, sense. Maybe not a football Vermont. powerhouse for right, a state. That makes sense. Those, right. those kids are playing. Those kids are playing. That's yeah. Right. No, no, you're all, exactly right. All five schools are yeah. playing. Yeah. <laughs> exactly right. All right. We're going to bring. Bernie will be happy. <laughs> that's right. We're going to bring uh, Johnny White on. He is uh, Douglas County head coach. Coach White, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate the uh, the expertise that you bring to the show and, uh, and, and all that you do for the kids there at Douglas County. Uh, how's the uh, the season going to look for you guys this year? Um, first of all, thank you for having me. I don't know about expertise, but I can talk a little bit. <laughs> now, come on now. I believe um, it. Uh, um, I, I, I'm looking forward to it. 
I mean, we're trying to do everything to stay right within the lines of, you know, we we do a good job of social distancing. Uh, what we what we added to our program, which has really helped, is you know how the kids will circle up on the on you know in the middle and you have your little conversations. We're putting them in stretch lines five yards apart and going through a stretch routine at the end of practice. Then they all take a knee in that stretch line so they're five yards apart and all over the field. And I had to go buy a megaphone so I could talk to all of them at one time. Um, we're not doing, of course, water bottles. Uh, our parents have been doing a good job of just buying the little eight-ounce bottle waters, you know, 80. So we get those in packages of 80, but we actually been going through probably about – Four to five hundred of those a day. Good gracious. Coach Rusty Mansell, I got a chance to see you for about, what, about eight or nine minutes last week? <laughs> if, it was, if it was that long. Oh, man, I come to practice, long. and we get out there, and, of course, everybody's – and what Coach is talking about, separate. You know, had one defensive group here, a defensive – everybody's spread out. I see a cloud coming up, and I'm like, man, that, that looks a little thick. Mm -hmm. Looks like it's got a little hammer to that. And about 10 minutes later, it rained as hard as I've seen it rain in Georgia in a long, long time. But I will say this. I haven't, I haven't seen that in a while. It poured. I'll say this. And, Coach, I want you to talk about this. There's a lot of construction going on in Douglas County. And I said, Coach, what in the world is going on right there? And he flips his phone out. And he shows me what they're building, an indoor there with a weight room and a toll. He's getting a brand-new home visitor side bleachers at Douglas County. Coach, talk a little bit about this because I'm telling you, what you showed me on your phone is going to be a huge, huge asset to your program and your kids. Oh, no question. I'm, I'm blessed. Uh, our superintendent, uh, when he came in, said that, that one of the issues in the county was, believe it or not, is with five schools, nobody meets the attendance requirements. So because of that... For playoff games, school, correct? Playoff games. Playoff games, yep. exactly. So, uh, so he, and you know, with us being the oldest school, and who knows how long that facility has been there. I know we have a we have a basketball coach named Chet Forrest, who was the girls' basketball coach, who's been here since '73, and he said it was there when he was there. Wow! So <laughs> yeah. exactly. So they tore everything down. We're getting a brand new facility with Hall of Fame room, a hundred seat theater meeting room, two sixty seat. Offense and defensive meeting rooms, coaches' offices, showers, brand new 125-man locker room. Uh, they're going to give us some space for probably a 40, 50 yard in the facility. Brand new weight room. So oh, it's special we're, now. We're, we're looking. We're, we're very excited. We're very excited. So I was there for eight minutes, six minutes. We looked at that, and and we both wanted to hug each other because I was so happy for him and That's his cool. kids. Yeah. It's just, That's I'm awesome. telling you now. This is a great facility they're about to get. That's cool. Yeah, and 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 good kids out there too. That's the other thing about it. Building a program, Tough. they continue to get. Tough. Yeah, they continue to get. Part of what the key is, coach, and we talk about this all the time, keeping kids in your school, keeping them oh, in the cool. program, not letting some of the best players move out of the program and go to the flashier, already established programs. So, how's that going? I mean, it's going well for us. I mean, we haven't lost a whole bunch of kids since we've been here. You know, it was funny. Our first year here in 2016, uh, we ended up having two guys sign D1s. One went to Liberty and one went to Arkansas State. But there were there were eight other guys that we knew about who signed five of them Power Five who signed Power Five scholarships who all started off their high school career at Douglas County. So we wanted to make sure that we did everything in our power from recruiting, from from social media, working that, from making sure they're in great academic standing, from pushing them and showing them to our best, to the best of our ability, how, how I mean, to how college practice goes. So I think we've been doing a great job of that. We got a great senior class, got some young guys coming up that are going to be special. So I'm very happy where we're at. But like I tell everybody, I want to get to, I want to get this program to the point that regardless of the win loss record, when you hear the name, you're expecting something special. Hey, Coach Doug Conkle here. Um, are you still on for Lithia Springs now next Friday? Yes, sir. So yes, sir. We, we go there on the floor. Tell me about about. It's been a long journey to get eight days away from that opening game. Tell me about oh, about how the kids are feeling now. What's the focus like? Is it is it easier to keep them doing all the right things now that you're this close? Oh, no question. I mean, when we got back in June, you know, we started a week later, so everybody started on the eighth week, but not everybody. A lot of counties started on the eighth. I kind of let them start on the fifteenth, 
And it was, you know, even as a coach, you're pushing them and you're going through everything, but you don't know if you're going to have a season. And, you know, you're taking all the precautions and you're doing everything the best of your ability. And the kids, you know, were worried. And I would get texts every night, Coach, you think we're going to play? Coach, are we really going to play? And I didn't, have, I didn't have an answer for them. And then they always say, well, what's your thought process on that? And I told, I told them just like I tell everyone else. I would love to play football. That's why I'm a football coach. That's what I love to do. But at the same time, I have a 15-year-old daughter who's my only child that I like to walk down the aisle one day. And me being a diabetic, I don't want to put myself or my family in a situation to where either I'm not here or I get someone that's sick. Like my, my mother-in-law lives with us, and she's in her mid-70s. So my thing is I'm going to do whatever they tell me to do, and I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. They want us to play. I'm going to play 100%. I'm going to, I'm going to do everything. If they tell us to shut it down, then I got to get I got to get these film on all these kids. Thank God I got practices where I can try to sell these kids to the right program. Uh, Coach, you brought it up. I'm glad you brought it up before I brought it up because then I would have felt strange bringing it up. I don't know if I'm supposed to, but we've heard from a lot of coaches saying that they don't know if we should go out and play. They don't know if they should go out and coach. They have situations like yours. You mentioned it. You're a diabetic. Your mother's living in the house with you. But you and I were speaking on the phone last week, and we were and we were speaking candidly, as we do every time that we get together and talk. And you told me, and, and, and I'm not going to have it verbatim, but, but uh, uh, you basically said, Chris, I can't leave the kids behind. I have to be there for the kids. Yeah, I'm worried, but I have to be there for the kids. Talk about that and the strains of, of, of keeping the team together in these worries sometimes. I mean, the, the main thing for me is, like, I, I came from a single-parent household. My mother had three children. And I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, even though I, I played football and I, football was my better sport, I loved basketball. And my, my middle school and high school basketball coach changed my life. He told me that I could make some out of myself. He told me that I had a chance to go to college. And, I, and until you hear that and until you see that, you don't believe it. So all I know is I know my thing is, is – like I tell you, I love wins and losses. I would love to win a state championship. But I know getting some of these young men a chance to go to school for free is not a, is not saving their lives. It's a generational change. Because now they're going to be able to have a child or get married and have children that are not even going to recognize the socioeconomic situation that they grew up in. So my thing is, while we're playing, my job is to make sure that I stress to these kids the importance of academics and make sure that I use every avenue in my power and all my coaches use every avenue in their power to make sure that we give these guys a chance to go to college. I don't care what level. Love it. You know, my thing is I learned the best from uh, my, 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 one of my uh, good college friends, Trooper Taylor, who used to always say, if it's free, give me three. <laughs> so, my thing, so my thing is if it's a free education, we're not we're not shooting our nose up at it. We're not turning it down. Like right. I told him, I said, mine changed my life. And I got a I got a hundred dollars in my pocket and anybody can tell me what city Liberty University is in. There you go. But, you I know, love they don't know it. anything about it. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You're you exactly know? right. It doesn't matter. It what matters is that degree you can put on your wall. That's so, right. Yeah. And that, and that's all that's all I'm concerned about. We're talking to uh, Douglas County head coach Johnny White, and you, you talked about Liberty. You talked about Arkansas State. You talk about that that diploma on the wall, and and, and I talk about it with my own son who plays college or high school football. And I, and I say at some point you're going to have to stop playing this game, whether it's you're going oh, yeah. to Canton and you have to hang it up, or it's you know at the end of your run in high school or after college or whatever that is. What are you doing, though, Coach, other than preaching the gospel when it comes to good grades and, and the importance of academics to get your kids an extra look, to, to talk to coaches that, that you can reach out to and say, hey, I've got a kid that I think has the ability to play at Liberty or Arkansas State or Georgia Tech or Georgia or Clemson or whatever. What is it that you're doing to, to help those kids? Well, first thing we're doing is basically making sure that those grades are on point, you know. So that's my thing. If the grades aren't on point, it's not going to matter. And the second thing that we do is build relationships. You know, the one thing I think that I that uh, me and a lot of guys that I know real well are, are sticklers on is, and I tell my kids, I am not going to lie for you. Yes, you know, sir. If, 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 if you're not at that level, either academically or athletically, when that school comes in, I'm not going to push you over because I can't. Right. Because my word means something. Yes, sir. Because it's going to come, it's going to come down to where they're on the fence about a kid, and a coach be like, "Are you going to put your name on?" Them? 
And I worked 25 years for this name. So if I put my name on you, what I'm telling that coach is he's going to do everything that's expected out of the, out of your program. And I just can't risk putting that name on. So I'm always going to be brutally honest with my kids, brutally honest with their parents, and brutally honest with colleges are about or what our kids have to offer. And I think that honesty helps out because they can come and I can be honest and say, Coach, I ain't got nothing that you're looking for right now. You know, and, and that's a true statement, and that saves them time. You know, they come in mm-hmm. and they speak and they can move, they can move elsewhere. Yes, sir. What I, also, what I also try to do is during our Thursday walkthrough practices, I try to bring in a guest speaker that, has, that is not football-related whether he's a cop, whether he's a lawyer, whether he's an electrician, and just give them some avenues to let them know that, first of all, your college is great and you could be very successful coming out of college. But there's also some other great jobs that you can be financially stable and just as successful that does not require college education, but it's going to require work. So, I mean, I we, we, try to, we try to hit every avenue we can to try to make these kids successful. Because my job right now in this year is, would I love to win a state championship? Yes, I would. But my line is I'm trying to make great employees. I'm trying to make great husbands, and I'm trying to make great fathers. You know, I think I like, I've, I've known Coach White for many, 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 many years, and the thing I, I admire about him, he's got two young men right now, Jonathan Jefferson and Connie Walker, two, you know, one committed to Georgia, one's committed to Louisville. He treats them like they're not committed anywhere. Mm-hmm. Every single kid is, is treated the same and the exact same expectations, hustling and practice for everybody. And that's why Coach White is successful because it doesn't matter who you are. You're treated the same. I've seen him for years. I've seen him where he's worked my camps. I've seen him in different settings. He treats everybody the exact same way. So I know without even going to talk to those kids how much they respect him. I, I, what a brilliant idea he just talked about yeah. bringing in different yeah. I've never heard that. No, I mean, I've never heard that. I mean – Amazing. Can you imagine bring, somebody that brought an electrician into me in high school? I'd be like, Coach, whatever, man. Yeah, yeah right. I'm not wiring anything. Those guys yeah. make great money. Yeah, they what, are, what, yeah, a, right. what a living yeah. electrician makes. So, no, you're right. Coach, kudos to you, man. I, I appreciate you always uh, accommodating me. I'm going to come back. I'm going to stay longer than eight minutes. But, uh, <laughs> I was, so, look, that, was, look that, that wasn't your fault or my fault. The Lord said get off the field. So we had hey, there was no doubt. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you hey, this. The Lord says it. I'm going to tell you this. We're, we're sitting there, and we're talking. And when that thing popped, you, uh, Coach had one four four left in it, <laughs> and I watched my man blow that whistle, and everybody on that Let's team go. was hauling butt. It was a hundred kids plus me and him, and everybody was gone because that lightning popped, and it was close. Yeah, how about that? Yep. Yep. Coach, uh, really quick before we let you go, uh, you've got another challenge that you're having to deal with this uh, this year. You talk about all this construction. You guys are not playing a true home game this year. Tell everybody about not, it. Not, not at all. We'll be playing. We all we have four away games. And we did that on purpose. We, we didn't want to go even, so we're going to play four. We're going to play. I'm sorry, four home games that are actually going to be away. We're going to play one at Lithia Springs and the other three at New Manchester. So, and that kind of helps us out with all the development and everything. So that'll help us because hopefully that next year we'll have six home games and possibly a scrimmage or maybe a spring game because the rest of you seen this. Like I told you, I, I believe it when I see it, but they still telling us hey. that. Uh, March 31st, yep. this this thing will be done. I can't wait to see it because I'm telling you, man, it, it's going to be it's going to be a special special. Uh, the meeting rooms, mm-hmm. oh my goodness, man. yeah, I um, mean, wow, first class. There first we go. Class. That's the way it yep. should be yep. there at Douglas County. So, so, coach, you you said your first game is on. You guys have Lithia Springs, and where is that game? That's our Lithia, and then and then because I live in Henry County, it looks like I was crazy to schedule two Henry County schools back to back. There you go. <laughs> we, we, well, go we go to Lithia. We go to Stockbridge, and then I'm going to bring Dutchtown to New Manchester. Uh, we've we've got an opener. We've got an opening uh, for our opener, so you might be hearing from me here in the next few days. Okay, good deal. We appreciate it. Hey, we got a side bet between you and Corey next week. What's the deal? No, ain't no side <laughs> bet. There's no side bet. He's one of my good friends. He Great does, guy. He's, he's, he's done a tremendous job. Yes, he has. Yes, and, he has. And you don't want to take his money. He's that good of friends. You're very nice. <laughs> there you go. Coach Johnny White, Douglas County head coach. Coach, we appreciate your time. Wish you the best of luck this season. All right, thank you. See you yes, soon, sir. Coach. Thank you. Goodness gracious, what a blessing to talk to a guy like that, man. You just yeah. you, that there's, is there's there's you know ten or twelve that I just really really like. I yeah. mean, just just consider my friends mm-hmm. and Johnny mm-hmm. White. He's one of them. Dating back to Creekside. Yeah. That's a dude now. There you go. You're listening to the 680 High School Athletic Roundtable brought to you by Georgia Farm Bureau and my MRI guy. 
along with uh, Doug Conkle, Chris Mooneyham, and Rusty Mansell. My name is Doug Cowart. When we come back, how do you get your kid recruited? How does your child get on the radar of a college football coach in the age of COVID, when there's so many obstacles and so many things that you have to overcome, we will tell you the answer to that question next on The Fan 680 and 93.7 FM. Download The Fan app now. Sponsored by T-Mobile for both Apple and Android. We've got the latest news and updates from around the world of high school sports. This is the Georgia High School Athletics Roundtable presented by Georgia Farm Bureau and MyMRIGuy.com with Tug Coward, Chris Mooneyham, Doug Conkle, and Rusty Mansell exclusively on The Fan. Appreciate you joining us and talking about high school sports. They're so important in the state of Georgia, and there's so many questions. This is the one question I've gotten more than any other. And I don't know why people come to me, because I don't know the answer. I'm trying to find out the answer myself for a kid that loves playing baseball and and has started playing football and, and doing a pretty good job there. I have wondered what is the process to get my kid seen, right? And And – that question was a viable. I mean, you mean every, normally? You mean normally, just yeah, without COVID? Yeah, right. That's okay. what I'm saying. Like right. w- without without COVID, it's already a complicated question. And yep. there's, I don't know if there's a right or a wrong, but I know there's a lot of different ways to do it. Throw in COVID nineteen, and it changes the game altogether because you can't do seven on sevens, and you can't do this, that, or the other uh, other thing. And that's why I've asked coaches all night, "What are you doing to get your kids seen?" Coach Collins from Georgia Tech, when we had him on, the head coach of the Jackets, what you know? What is it that you're doing to see kids throughout the state of Georgia? So we have the expert on the show. Might as well ask him, Rusty Mansell. Rusty, what do parents need to be doing? What do they need to be encouraging their kids to do? What is it that, that student athletes need to do to get a college scholarship offer and, and actually land a, uh, a scholarship to go play ball somewhere? The first thing, and, I, and I've had multiple conversations in the last, like, two weeks with, with close friends that have kids that are 2021s. 20, mm-hmm. The first thing I tell them right now is to breathe. Mm-hmm. Just relax a little bit because here's what's going on. These teams are in camp mode. Mm-hmm. So the entire August, if these colleges are playing, they're in camp mode. September, they're going to start playing games, okay? Recruiting is to a, to a crawl right now to a crawl if you're fortunate enough your school is playing right now get into your season don't worry about anything else that's going on. you can't even take a visit if you want to mm-hmm. you cannot meet with you i don't care if you're the number one player in the country Corey foreman was at george this weekend mm-hmm. he did not sit or step foot in front of kirby smart in that uga staff mm-hmm. so uh my suggestion and what i talked to multiple coaches get three or four games into the season three or four games will get you into october take you about a minute, minute and a half, and cut you up 10 plays. Mm -hmm. Then go to Twitter with it. Tag that South Alabama coach. Tag that Kennesaw State coach. Most likely, you know, if you reach for the stars and you tag Georgia football, somebody's going to see it. But make sure you're on the right level. Am I okay playing at Tennessee Martin? Is my kid okay playing at Furman? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Be, Be strategic with it. Yeah. But every single day, if you just keep dropping highlights, you're going to get muted. You're going to get muted. Yep. You go on there and say, season update, four games, six foot two, 185 pound, fully qualified wide receiver. Somebody's going to watch it. Right. Use Twitter to your advantage, but right now, just breathe and enjoy your senior season. And I'll say one of the most frustrating things, I know Rusty deals with it a lot. I deal with it a little bit too. And you could tell, um, you know, our coaches we talk, they deal with it as well, or, or what he just kind of alluded to is is kids or their parents, it can be either one, not really being honest with themselves about what their of level course. is. Yeah. And, and it's easy to get your head in the stars. Now, I will say this, though, it's, it's not a bad thing to to tag one dream school. Sure. Because you know what, that that GA that sees your film, he probably didn't start at Georgia. Yeah. He's probably got friends who are GAs at South Alabama mm-hmm. and Kennesaw College State. Charleston. Mm-hmm. He might, because I know that, you know that happens too. They pass guys around. This guy, is, he's not for us, but he might be for you. Check it out. Mm-hmm. So that happens a lot as well. But yeah, the kids have got to be realistic. The parents have got to be realistic about where they are. 
And and the, here's the hard part, though. The COVID factor is if you're a late bloomer in 21, it is the worst time to be a late bloomer because you didn't get camp season over the That's summer. Right, but you still, you, you, you got, that is a valid point, but you're still kind of a level playing field because nobody did. True. Mm-hmm. Very Georgia true. Georgia was not able to adjust their board to say, hey, we got seven wide receivers. Three of these guys were late bloomers. Georgia didn't get a chance to work those kids out. So it it, it, it it is a bad year, but it's also everybody is in the same boat. And if the state of Georgia is playing and we play, it's going to be an advantage to our kids right. to get opportunities. Sure, and I, that applies across the spectrum of sports, not just sure. football. Because no. I, we've talked football mainly tonight, yeah. but I, I think I, I, anybody Softball listening to volleyball is going on right now. That's right. you, you got baseball coming up. Yeah. I, I think that's the, the thing that I want to make the most clear is that applies to all sports. And, and let's not forget something that's happened in football recently, but it happened in the spring sports a few months ago. Everybody got an extra year of eligibility in college. College. That's going to trickle down to these recruiting classes right. right now and for the next couple of years as well. So, Rusty, do you think that's going to lead to more of a competition for that junior college spot now or that prep school spot? Like a bottleneck a little yeah, bit? Yeah, a little yeah. bit. I think that, that a junior college coach in Mississippi football, where it's great junior college football, I think he's going to have more options than he's ever had when it comes to finding a kid to play next year. It, roster management on many levels is going to change in the next two years. It's going to be so important. But here's something we, we don't even have time to discuss tonight, but we all know next January when this transfer rule comes into college football, yeah. it's going to change it more than anything you've ever seen. So you throw in, you got a bunch of seniors. So let's just take Sam Pittman. Let's take Sam Pittman at Arkansas real mm-hmm. quick. Sam Pittman's recruiting his first full cycle, first full class, mm-hmm. okay, the 2021 class. He's recruiting his seniors to stay, the ones that he needs to stay, the one that feels like they've got to stay. Then Sam Pittman's got to decide in that transfer report, wait a minute, do I go out and get a left tackle somewhere? Do I go out and get a linebacker somewhere? Do I go? How many spots do I save? So now you're a head coach and you got to decide how many you're going to take in 2021, mm-hmm. how many of your seniors you're going to try to bring back because they right. all can come back. Right. It doesn't mean they're all coming back. And then what do you do with the transfer portal? So college football, the landscape – it's, it's about to change forever. And one thing that's going to happen with that transfer rule is not only is there going to be a huge readjustment as personnel goes from one place to the other, there's going to be spots open up because there's going to be some kids who enter the portal and never land anywhere. Mm-hmm. That's, that's going, going to happen a bunch yeah. too. Yeah, that, that had going on now is going to be magnified when everybody could transfer. Yeah. Taking and, and to your point about the extra year of eligibility, who is at the greatest disadvantage, do you believe? The, the people that are there already or the people coming in? Because I contend it's the people coming in, right? You mean, can I change to uh, throw everybody a curveball? Sure. Because I I'm, I'm, I'm know a lot of people in this field. Let's take, for example, girls softball. Mm-hmm. I know kids that are on full scholarship that just got a phone call and said you're not on full scholarship. Right. Because here's the problem. If you had 24 kids in your program and you had nine seniors and you're bringing in nine kids, you have money for 24 kids. Now you have to have money for 35 kids Mm -hmm. or 33 kids. Mm -hmm. So everybody takes a hit. And especially if it's baseball, too, because you only have have 11 scholarships to begin with. It's going to be the same. 11.26 or whatever the number is. So that's seven. So if you have – and I didn't really think about that, but I talked to a D2 coach I know well, and he said, man, all eight of my seniors are staying. So he had to call those eight freshmen and say, listen, I know I promised you this amount. But this is here's what I actually here's have. what you're getting. Yeah. So there's that trickle down. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't think somebody like Georgia, Alabama, Arkansas, those type of schools, that's really going to matter because they, they're going to have to adjust it. But you start talking about Charleston Southern, Kennesaw State. Right. What happens there? Not, and I want to bring that back up, but 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 angle this towards the kids because I know we know that we have some young people listening. Look, this is not about me, but I'm going to talk about me just for a second. Look, I, I grew up super poor. You know, my, my mom was in a bad spot with a with an abusive alcoholic stepfather. I grew up in a bad spot. Grew up extremely poor. Uh, saw a lot of crime, a lot of drugs. Had a lot of shady friends. That's just the way things were when you were growing up where I grew up. Mm-hmm. Getting this education is so very important for so many kids who may be listening to us or watching us right sure, now. Sure. you got to love the one who loves you back. We all want to go play football at the University of Georgia. No, not me. But Doug, 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 okay. but Doug the definitely, University of Florida. Right. Doug or, definitely you know I mean? does not want to go play at the University of Georgia. <laughs> we, we, we'd all love to go play at Alabama or right. Notre Dame or yeah. Southern or Cal or Georgia Tech, Tech or right. whomever. But look, if you can go play for Presbyterian or you can go play for Kennesaw State yep. or you can go play for Truett McConnell or you can go play at Reinhardt, what matters is getting that education. 
and getting to play. Yep. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Getting, getting to, to play. play. That's another that's factor. A, that's you have right. to ask yeah. yourself out there right now, do you want to be on the big campus and walk on and sit there for four years? Maybe you do. Or do you also still want to get a college education and go somewhere and get to play the sport? That's, that's the biggest thing. Change I your to, life and yeah. still get yeah. to play football. That's the you biggest know, thing I deal with yeah. parents. I'm like, listen, and I'm not, I might use, use Furman, for example. Mm-hmm. You go to Furman, it's a $50,000 a year scholarship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're not going to play on ESPN. Game mm-hmm. day is not going to be yeah. there. Right. But you're going to get a $200,000 Mercer, same way, $200,000 yeah. degree. Right. Yeah. I, I it's get hard sometimes. You'd be surprised. Yeah. And, and it's I hard think sometimes. No, it's, the right. things that drive me craziest, and, and look, I, I work with Hudson Mason every day, who yep. was the quarterback at Georgia, and, and he sees things very differently than I do because his experiences are very different than mine. But – I feel like oftentimes that that education gets so devalued. Same here. And and it drives me I, up the wall. I absolutely. can't help. But, and I call him on it all the time. I'm like, Hudson, I get it. You're a player's, you're a player's guy. I yep, get it. Yep. And, and the players, you want to see them make uh, whatever the money is, whether it's name, image, and likeness or another, whatever that is. Yep, yep. But please stop diminishing the value of an education and what that can do for you. Because it, it and you heard what was it, Coach uh, uh, Coach White at yep. Doug at Douglas County? He was talking about the importance when he said he brought yeah. in electricians and police officers and what a, what a and lawyers. Great because uh, absolutely, because there's many things you can do past your playing days. And I and I said it earlier. It may be because you go to Canton or Cooperstown, but one day you will stop playing. What are you going to do then? It's it's not. Really, listen, the, the Miller Grove coach. So you had a kid text him, Coach, can I play in the league? Yeah. That's okay to think that. But you also got to say, Coach, what can I do? Where can I get a free education? Yeah. Exactly. It, it, it's, it, it, I'm with you, Tug. It frustrates me so it much. Me guys, one day Hudson Mason will have a child, and he'll be wondering how he's going to pay for that kid's yeah. college education. Then hey, he'll know. I like, broke Hudson's commitment to Georgia. Just a little side note. Uh, fans, don't forget. <laughs> yell at him because he needs to be yelled at. Don't forget the fan family of stations is your uh, high school football voice of the South. Here on 680 The Fan and over on the Extra at 106.3 FM and 1230 AM and the Extra app, we're the home of the high school football scoreboard show. Coming your way to 10, uh, 10 to midnight starting next week and we'll have a game by the way starting at uh, 7 30 our pregame show will start at 7 now we don't know what game that is because mystery our game just game. got canceled yeah, but we game. will have a game nonetheless we'll see you next friday night over on the extra 106.3 fm and 12 30 there you go you've been listening to the 680 the fan high school athletic roundtable brought to you by georgia farm bureau and my mri guy for rusty manzel chris mooneyham and doug conkle i'm tug cowart this is the fan 680 at 93.7 fm Wondering if the six games a week your kid is pitching are going to affect them later in life? I'm your guy. Go to MyMRIGuy.com now. The Georgia High School Football Scoreboard Show. Every Friday during football season, heard across the state of Georgia from 10 p.m. to midnight. Starting September 4th, running through the entire high school football season. Go to 680thefan.com slash scoreboard show for a full list of affiliates. Jeff Francoeur here. From my early days playing GHSA ball to my 13 years in the major leagues, I know the importance of supporting your home state and being part of a team. Georgia Farm Bureau is always the home team, helping Georgia build a strong agriculture industry and offering affordable home, auto, and life insurance for Georgia families. With agents and volunteers in every community of the state, Georgia Farm Bureau is always the home team. Visit Georgia Farm Bureau online at gfb.org to learn more.